Okay, I'm recording this for the second time because I did a bunch of recording without my microphone turned on, so I'm going to do it again. I'm about to upload the CAD exercises because last lesson I spoke about how I don't want us to forget what we were doing uh, before we went into lockdown. So I've set up 12 exercises for you to do to keep your CAD skills going. So don't get rusty by the time we get back. I'll show you how I'd like you to do it. So we can go through the slides, which I'm going to make a copy for everyone. And you can see a bunch of different um, little projects. None of them particularly build on each other. They're all achievable separately. But I'll pick a couple out and show you how I, I would like you to go about doing it. So let's do that little project there. I'm going to bring up my, well, I'll refer back to these dimensions. Everything should be dimensioned. However, things like this here, we'll talk about that. If there is a dimension that isn't there, it is most likely unnecessary. And if you can't figure it out, I want you to think of assume. So I would assume there's no dimension or um, di diameter for this circle here, but my assumption would be that these holes are in the center. Okay, we'll get to that. Open up on shape, log in, make sure you're in metric millimeters. Before you go anywhere, make a, a document called CAD exercises and start making um, new uh, parts. Okay, so click on the plus and make a new part, part studio, give it a name. I'm going to call this 001 that align with the uh, drawing I'm doing. So always start with a sketch. For me, for that drawing, I'm going to start on the top plane and then I'm going to view straight down on that top plane. I'm going to do a circle. I'm still in sketch mode. I'm going to start from the origin. That's very useful to start from there. And bring it out like that and click once, click again, and then it'll give me a little box to type in my dimensions. Obviously, if I miss that part, then I have to add the dimensions myself or click on dimensions and change it, double click. However, it is 80, so I'm going to go back and make it 80. Now, there are three holes, one, two, three. They're all 90 degrees to each other. So I'm going to use another circle, but I'm going to make it a construction line and work out where they intersect with these lines here. Start from the middle, bring it up, click there. Now, if you go back to the drawing, it tells us it's 28 mil from the center. That gives us a radius to that circle. Um, it's asking me for the di diameter. So I'm going to type in the radius. 28, but I'm going to times it by 2, which will give me a diameter, which 56. Well, you probably worked that out anyway. You're pretty smart. Then it tells me there are three holes. Turn off construction lines, stay to circle, zoom in, and it's going to be on that intersection where this circle and that line hit. I'm going to hover my cursor around until I get two little icons like that to tell me I'm in the intersection, and I'm bringing out click and type in 10 mil. There are three holes. Click, bring it out, 10 mil. Make sure you are not just randomly on a line like that there. If you are, you'll have to then dimension it to this line. Like that. Okay, lock it in. Uh, I'm also not the right diameter there, so I'm going to click on that circle and tell it I want it to be 10 mil. This one in here, we don't know, okay? It hasn't given us to us. So the person that made the drawing is going to make an assumption that we are going to understand what he meant. He would have meant that 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 there, if I do the calculations, 56 minus 80 divided by 2, that should be 12 millimetres. Makes sense? 
So then in here, that circle should be another 12 millimeters making these centered. So let's do 56 minus two times 12, 24. That should be 32. Click on there, bring it up, type in 32. I could double check if I want. I could put dimensions in. I don't want to over constrain it. Now, there are two lines that come off this circle and they come off from that intersection right there, which I could, I'll do, I'll do two ways. Up here, I'll find the intersection and I'll just hold my left button and drag it out to about there. And you can see there's a little, oh, I don't know if you can see it there. So I'll control Z, I'll move it over here. Where that intersection is there, I'm going to do a line right on there, drag it out here and see how as that line goes horizontal, I get a little black horizontal line to show me it's horizontal. That's a constraint and I'm going to make it constrain it that way. The next one I'm going to just do over here, but I'm still going to look for that line to make it horizontal. This time, I'm going to constrain those lines together. So I'm going to use a tangent. Tangent, that line to that line. That means I'll just touch. And then I'm going to use the scissors, the trim, and trim away what I do not want. I don't have to trim my construction lines, but I do have to trim these, or it won't be a valid profile. There's my sketch. I'm going to tick. I'm happy with that. I can always go back into it and edit it by double clicking. And I'm going to add an extrude. I'm going to rotate around so you can see it happening. It says, what do I want to extrude? I want to extrude that. If I go back and look at my drawing. I can see that it's only five millimeters thick. So I'll come back here. Um, I do like to use symmetric, but it's not necessary and make it five millimeters. Happy with that. So I'm going to tick. And I think we have drawing one. I want to put a screenshot of that in. So I'm going to turn off these planes. I don't want to see the planes. So the shortcut is P. So just to hide them, I want to make sure that it's in isometric. There we go. I don't want to hover over it and have more of my lines come out orange like that. So I'm going to move my cursor over to the side. For me on this computer, I'm going to do Alt Print Screen. So I get a screenshot of that window. I'm going to come here, Control V, paste it in. That looks really ugly. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to crop that image. I don't need to see all of my toolbar from Onshape. I'm going to bring it down and Get rid of it as much as I can without cutting into my drawing. And click over here. And now I'm just going to fit that in to the side. Exercise one, done. Now I'm going to do a couple of little random ones around here just to get you going. Uh, exercise three looks pretty good. So I'll come back to Onshape, I'll click on the plus, make a new part and rename it 003. And let's go back and have a look. Okay, it looks pretty simple, like a little piece of angle with a hole in it. Um, the hole is centered by the looks of it, goes right on the edge. I've got a 20 mil lip there. I'm going to start with that rectangle, which is 100 mil by 45. Come back here. This time I will sketch on the front. Right click, view normal to sketch plane. And I'll make a center point rectangle. Start on the origin, bring it out here, and then type in what I want. I want that to be 100 and that to be 45. I can use the dimension tool to change it later or to add it if I haven't. There was a shelf along here. So I'll go back. I'm going to pick a line, not a shelf, but a little angle. I'm going to come from this edge with a line, hold my left button down, drag it to this edge. 
and see how when I make sure it's horizontal I'll get some perpendicular marks and then a little connect mark. While I'm there I'm going to dimension that, so dimension, D is a shortcut, and I know that it was 20 mil up. I'm going to have a look here, so I've drawn that line there 20 mil up. There was a circle which was 25 radius, so 50 mil diameter, and it came from that midpoint right on that edge, and that was 50 mil diameter. I'm going to do something else. There's a little lip there. I'm going to not draw a circle. I'm going to do an offset. Okay, where were we? Sorry about that. I had to pause it for a little bit. Now, um, there is a center circle in there, which I could easily draw out to 40 diameter, but I'm going to show you another tool called the offset tool. So offset is here, and I'm going to offset that in the other way and make that 5 mil. So I clicked on what I wanted to offset, brought it, made sure it went the right way, and then gave it the right amount that it is offset, which is 5 mil. So if I was to change that um, dimension, this one here, if I was to change that to 55, it would remain 5 mil away. Very useful for you. So that was 50. Now let's trim what I don't want. So click on the little trim button. And uh, let's see, I don't want that line, don't want that line, don't want that. Don't want that one. No, don't want you and don't want you. That's the shape I want. Sketch is done. I'm going to tick and let's start doing some extrudes. I'm going to extrude this one. And if you look here, that comes out 60 millimeters. So I'm going to go back there and type in 60. Tick. Now it looks like my sketch has disappeared, but it is just hidden. So I'm going to go to the sketch, re-click that eye so I can see what I want. And if I look here, that part there comes out at a nice 20 mil and come back and I'm going to extrude that part of the sketch at 20 mil. Tick, and I'm pretty much completely done. So I'm going to go to isometric view Hide my work planes, zoom in, take a screenshot, come back to my slide, paste it in, double click, crop what I don't want, here, and I have number three done okay i've had a few interruptions including the cat i'm going to find another one with something circular let's do this one we've done a lot of extrudes so i'm going to do this one um so number four It'd be easy to do as an extrude, just a circle and extrude down a smaller circle and make that object. But I want to do it as a revolve so you can see how a revolve works. Uh, if I didn't see that picture there, that 3D version of it, and just had this one drawing, would that would be all I need. There's a line going down the middle and you'll see it looks a bit different than a normal line. It's got a long dash, short dash, long dash. That's a revolve line. So anything drawn on that line is... A revolution plus you can see a uh, dimension symbol there that we've been using in class so it's a few little um uh, identifiers that show that to be a circular little plug like that so i'm going to go back to my cat exercises click on plus make a new part before i go too far i'm going to rename it and call it number four Pretty easy to remember I've got a 60 mil like plug there uh, 40 and 20 pretty easy let's start on um, 
perhaps. I don't know about the angle. You know what? I'm going to draw it on its side. So I'm going to go here on the right. I'm going to right click and put a new sketch on there, then right click and view to normal to sketch plane. I'm going to draw it this way. Um, let's draw a normal rectangle, not a not a center rectangle, but a corner rectangle. And I'm going to draw one. I'll draw it right from the middle. So let's come down here to that origin, draw it up here, and let's take another one and draw it up like that. So roughly the shape I want. Now I'm not typing in my sizes. I'm going to dimension it, do it the hard way. That one there should be 30. That one there could also be 30. So I don't have to tell it it's 60 because that is obvious. That one there, 20. This one here, 10. That's all I have to do. Now, just to make it nice and clean, I'm going to delete that line there. There's two on top of each other, so I had to delete it twice, okay? Tick, my sketch is done. Instead of an extrude, I'm going to do a revolve. What do I want to revolve? I want to revolve that sketch. What do I want to revolve it around? I want to revolve it around that line. And I have my shape. Let's have a look if it looks like what we want. There we go. That's the shape. Matches that. I'm going to turn off my planes. Zoom in a bit so I get a nice clean image. Um, move my mouse over the side so I don't have the highlighted faces. Come over to here and control V, paste it in. And once again, crop the unnecessary parts off. Nice and neat. Click off there somewhere. There we go. Maybe blow that one up a little bit so I can see. It looks the same. There we go. So I've already done a couple. The drawings. Um, post in the comments below if there's any that you've had a go of that you've practiced. This one I think I would do an array. That one I might do as a little tutorial tomorrow. That shouldn't be a problem. Most of these are pretty straightforward. The only one I would suggest may be a little bit of an issue, and that's only because you haven't gone over it, is this one here. So please, if you can figure out how to do a circular array, give it a go. However, don't draw that individually. I'll show you a really quick and easy way to do a shape like this tomorrow. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to delete each one of these. No free rides in this course. And I'm going to post this as your exercise for week nine. Okay, you can do it.